guys. We are messy and we mean it. Also, mommy. <laughs> I've been staying so at home too long. <laughs> so this is our fourth episode. Mm-hmm. Hello, 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 yeah. hello. And uh, I don't know. It's been quite scary because um, yeah. this is supposed to be a space where we are vulnerable and we are bearing our souls. So, you know. Just kind of be patient with us as we slowly reveal ourselves to you guys. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite um, scary. Like these are the kind of conversations that I have at home with my friends, you know. And yeah, it's just just a very weird feeling knowing that everybody's gonna listen in. Mm-hmm. It's like you are toggling between how much do I say? But I want to talk about it. But it's really hard, you know. And I think like both of us kind of try to push ourselves to mm. be brave, you know, be bold. So every night, uh, not every night, I mean, you know, the nights before we have a recording, we kind of hype each other up and like text each other or send each other little voice notes and be like, okay, let's, let's dare to be vulnerable, you know. Um, because I don't think it's easy to do that anywhere. And I mean, on social media, there is a site to us that we choose and decide to show to you guys. Um, And this is the other side to us, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think on the topic of social media, like today, we really want to talk about body image, but not so much so like how we look, look and whether we are happy about it, but more of like just digging deeper about, you know, how we feel. I would say, no, that I don't make sense. I think the Better term for this maybe is like self-image. It's not yes. just like a body thing. Yes, it's yes, like, yes. you know, everything. Yes. Yeah, our, our appearance, basically. So, Belle and oh, Amanda, go. myself, let's talk about something that not everyone admits to, but we're going to go there. Okay. Um, do you Photoshop your photos? I think this is a burning question that everybody wonders, right? Especially for, I mean, speaking from experience, like myself. Yes, I would say that, I wouldn't say every photo because sometimes you take the photo with a filter already and you don't really have to edit it further. But let's say if I'm shooting a campaign, right? Definitely I have to edit out, you know, the blemishes. Um, let's say maybe, um, so I have an, uh, I wouldn't say issue, but um, my jawline is very not symmetrical. I understand that your face is not supposed to be symmetrical, but my right jaw, because of the way I chew and my stress and my grinding, like the teeth grinding, my right jaw is a lot more pronounced. So in photos that it's very evident, I'll try to push the right jaw in mm. a bit. Um, then obviously there's other like enhancements. For example, if you have a pimple, a pimple scar that even your concealer cannot conceal, mm. then you, are, you can use so many apps, guys. There's like this app called Retouch. So good. All you have to do is just click and it'll just automatically clone from you for you. You don't even need to know how to use like Photoshop. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone photoshops their photos, me included. Um definitely the face. <laughs> um skin, you know, uh what was my favorite one? Like to make it look like more polished. Yeah. No, not polished, like more like What's that word? Like the texture of the skin is better, you know? Uh, like you smoothen yeah. it a bit. I'm the kind of person that would like zoom into my face and then I like Photoshop everything. Yeah. Like even if it's a mi- mi- minuscule thing, like like half an mm of your eyes or your nose or like... Because I, I, I think we're the most critical of ourselves. Yes, so yeah, yes. 100% I Photoshop. My favorite is Meitu. Okay, shout Meitu. out to Meitu. Meitu, what's Meitu? Me too. Two. Me too. Two. <laughs> I love me too. And I also have it like 100% guarantee that the top influencers also Photoshop their photo. I know. Because before this, it was kind of a gray area for me, right? Like I was like, oh no, I have to be like ethical and true. But let's be honest, social media is not the most, it's not a place where people are the most honest and yeah, I'm vain. So I kind of want to, you know, post my photos of myself where I like what I look like. (laughs) But I guess 
it's like it has become industry standard in in a way because we fail to realize that when you take a photo, um, you look a lot larger sometimes um, because of the lighting and because of how like HD your photo is. Yeah. On top of that, your flaws that you pick out or like, you know, things that you don't like, for example, your eye bags, your pores and things like that. Things that people don't actually pick out, mm-hmm. but you yourself know, mm-hmm. it's more like, um, it's more enhanced and it's HD. Mm-hmm. So all the more you'll be critical of all these, yeah. I think. And obviously, uh, because it's very important to like filter your photos, you know, to, to, I would say the word is now process. You need to process your photo before you post it up. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people like to just take the photo and post it like that. That's very raw. But actually, when you post it on Instagram and all, the, okay, this is going to like very technical, but the quality, the coloring will look very different from the, from when you like take it. So if you want your desired color or if you want like, you know, the the sky to be a bit more blue just yeah. because it makes it look nicer yeah. and it's more, I would say but like in tune to what you already. see. That's not Photoshop. That's more like treatment, right? And coloring. Yeah, but then again, it can be applied to maybe your face or so and how you look. Mm-hmm. For example, if you're wearing a very nice, um, so recently I was in Hong Kong and I was wearing this very nice sweater. So when I wore it, I felt really pretty. I mean, it's very nice. I don't know why when I took the photo, my sweater just looked like a pao. Yeah. You know, it was very fluffy. Yeah. So things like that, I think is very important. If you want to post out the photo and you're not really happy with how it looks like, just edit lah. You know, I, and, and I think that happens to everyone. Yeah. Like, like you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I look yeah. nice. Yeah. And then when you take a photo, you're like, what? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think we have reached a point where, yeah, it's universal. Everybody does it, you know, there's yeah. nothing to fuss about it. Yeah. Don't need to feel bad about yeah, it. You like know? you said, it has become industry standard. So mm. I guess there is so much pressure to look a certain way, to look so polished, to look so... Um, and especially in... Actually, especially in Singapore, I, I especially felt that... Um, I felt very judged a lot of the time. Like people oh. will really look at what you wear and, you know, people are so conscious of how they present themselves. Um, it's, it's crazy. Like, my husband definitely notices a difference when I am preparing to go to work, mm. you know? And he can see the amount of pressure I put on myself. Like, just two nights ago, you know, before uh, I, I, I had a shoot yesterday in Singapore and just two nights ago, I was stressing myself out or oh, what to wear, you know? And it's not just what to wear. It's the whole outfit, right? Your accessories and then your your bag and your shoes and everything. And everything has to just be perfect sometimes. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. Um, I think this also comes to, I guess, being, I wouldn't say accepted in Singapore, but more of like to feel like you are showing up as your best self. No, you I know? just don't want to be judged. And I don't like it when people look at me a certain way. I, I don't like... No one likes it. No one likes to feel like, oh, you do not have a place here. You do not... Um, you know, you do not... You know, what are you doing you here? You have a place here. Yeah, that's why we are friends, right? But yeah, I, I feel uh, that way uh, a lot um, at uh, events. And uh, yeah. I do think that the way we show up and what we wear really does help ease the social like tension, I would say. But I think I went to an event once and I always feel so anxious at events that I freeze up. And when people ask me, hey, hello, hi, nice to meet you. I'll be like, oh, hi. Then they'll be like, hey, how are you today? I'm like, oh yeah, not good. Then, you know, then the conversation just dies. Then I'll go home and I'll ask myself, why did I say that? Like, maybe I could have like given a better answer and things like that. And I think it all boiled down to just me being anxious, not feeling confident. And it wasn't until I reached, I went to this one event and I had other like, um, what is it? KOLs, influencers, celebrities um, come together and they were just sharing about it because it was quite an overwhelming event when there's like heaps of people everywhere. Oh my God. And then, you know, when you're hyper, like, uh, what's that word for it? When you're not hyper aware, overly stimulated, you know, and there's so much sounds around, the lights are so bright and things like that. Then I think when everybody just came together and shared about, hey, you know, um, like, uh, do you think we can stand together? Like it, it does feel a bit 
anxiety inducing. And that was when I really, it just clicked. Everybody feels the same way. And if we're going to make the most of our job and like the event and just us being able to show up here, we just need to find a way to feel more comfortable and to understand that everybody is probably feeling the same thing. And you are not alone. Because I think the isolating feeling about feeling like anxious and alone and unconfident at a public setting like that is the one that makes us really crushed inside. Mm. And it makes everything like a, like so, so much more stressful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not just the outfit. Yeah. Right? There is the hair and makeup. That is a whole process. You have to go in three hours early, four hours early. You have to get it right. You know, it's not just coming in and then, oh, you know, do hair and makeup. It's like, what makeup suits this outfit? What hair suits this outfit? I remember when I was first pregnant um, and nobody really knew I was pregnant, but I was very sick. So my my uh, morning sickness was horrible. I was constantly gagging, puking. Um, I was, that was probably one of the most, uh, one of the most sick I felt um, ever, actually. And I had already committed to an event and it was a fashion-related event. So I got dressed. I had hair and makeup coming in. Um, during hair and makeup, I was crying the whole time. Oh no. Because I didn't <sighs> want to go. Not because, you know, I mean, I know, in a really weird way, I do love the, the dressing up and getting ready. I mean, this is part of why we do it, right? Um, you know, I do love, you know, trying out different hairstyles and trying out different looks, trying out different makeup and seeing what works with this outfit and, and trying out different looks. You know, oh, today I want to look edgy. Today, you know, I want to look minimalistic or whatever it is. Um, but at that time, it was just really, and I had a really, really nice dress. My makeup was really good. My hair was really good. But I could not appreciate it because I was just stuck in the zone where, oh my God, there's just so much pressure, you know. I have committed to this. Okay, I will attend it. But I feel so sick and I feel so not up for it, you know. Um, and yeah, I <laughs> on one hand, I love it. But also the other hand is like, why do we put ourselves through this sometimes, you know? Yeah. And... I don't think we feel bad saying no. Sometimes it's like, it's the chase. We're just constantly chasing. It feels like you have to constantly show up. Yeah. You know? Because you will be forgotten. Yeah. And showing up is not enough. You have to present yourself in a certain way. You know? And uh, that's actually a lot of pressure. Now, now sitting here and talking about it. It just feels lot. like we're unpacking a lot. Yeah. And like, we're sitting here As like we that. should. And... And just having like a couch top is really nice. Mm -hmm. But I would say that let's like talking about body image. Growing up, do you ever feel any pressure to look a certain way? You look at the mirror and be like, I really like that look. Like I look, I like how I look. Um, no, no, not, no, to be honest. And until today, I don't think, I think there are more times when I look in the mirror and it's like, okay. You know, I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. And like, whoa, you're looking really good. You know, I, I don't think I I get there. Mm. But have you ever like despised how you look? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there are days where... I'm just... just getting feel. Yeah. It's like a bad day or something. How about you? I... The fun fact about me is that actually I don't look in the mirror a lot. I don't know when this habit came about, but I just stopped. Um, I think that's a I good mean, thing though. I mean, like, yes, because I know that I might be very critical, you know. So I just stopped. I probably just apply my makeup and that's it. So I think a lot of the pressure that we feel when we have to show up, right, at all these like work events or work commitments is also the comparison. Like we... We put the pressure on ourselves. We compare ourselves to others. Like, oh my god, this person's outfit is like a 10 out of 10. This person is polished. Not only is this person put together, this person is polished AF. Elegant. Yeah. And I feel inferior. I feel inferior. 
I think for me, I don't... I think for me, inferior isn't the word. It will, It's more like... So my brain clicks in a way that, hey, you know, this is the industry standard. Yeah. So then I'll critique myself like, okay, you know, what, what, what do I need to change? Do I need to source more nicer shoes? Um, do I need to change up my makeup? Um, maybe my, let's say if I'm shooting a beauty campaign, maybe my nails could have been done differently, you know? It's like small things that a lot of people actually don't care about, but being in this job, it's like your SOP, you know? Yeah. And I think that doing what we do, I like the umbrella term that if you are professional, you need to check all these boxes. Mm. But how much is too much, you know? I think being a, oh, I don't want to say being a woman, but like just human beings in general, it's hard enough, you know? Our appearance, uh, it's hard to come to terms with our appearance, you know? It takes work. But especially for us, which is so public facing, the intensity is so much more, you know? Mm. I think, do you think it's harder being in the public eye? Yeah, of course. I mean, people are not the kindest online, you Mm -hmm. know, and we are so open online. We basically play our whole life online and people are just going to be critical of everything, not just your lifestyle choices, your face. People will be like, eh, your face. Mm. No, I think think the the most common comment I've gotten was, are you pregnant? Do you Mm. get fat? Why are you fatter now? Uh, and things like that. Like, why do people feel like they can comment such things? But I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a public space. Yeah. You're free to say whatever you want. But yeah. I, I just wonder what goes through their minds as they are leaving that comment and clicking like, send, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, there are people hiding behind a computer and that's as far as they'll go. <laughs> Okay, I got this question. Have you ever tried to... I mean, I know that you... So my my friend here is super stylish. I would say that you have your own style and vibe. Thank you. But have you ever felt the need to conform or like chase a beauty standard? 100%. Um, Again, especially in Singapore. (laughs) Especially in Singapore, like what you wear, what you carry, you know. Oh my God, it is so like, I don't know. Everyone pays attention to that. And I never grew up like that. So it was very, um, it was very eye-opening for me and not in the best way possible. Like I have, and I still catch myself having to reel myself in like, you know. um, Yeah, the standard is set as such, but. Don't overexert yourself, you know, to reach, not to even, not to say to even reach that standard, but I can set my own standard, you mm. know. Um, I think for context, Amanda um, lives in KL. She came to Singapore for a couple of years, and now she's back in KL. And I'm back in KL, but I still work in Singapore. In so Singapore. I go back like every week. Yes. Uh, like every week, I go back twice. Um, but I think it's very starkly different uh, how the culture, the culture is. For yeah. Her. And uh, I, I find like now it gives me a good balance because I can come back and like emotionally and mentally rest. And then I go back to Singapore again for the, for the chaos, which is actually a really, really nice balance. It's tiring, but uh, I'm in a much better place uh, mentally and emotionally. So that, that yeah, I made peace with it. Mm. I think at the start of my career, I felt a very, very heavy need to conform to a certain beauty standard, more of like, I would say face shape. I have never really talked about this before, Mm. but my face shape isn't the smallest and for work and all, especially, you know, because when you're on camera, you actually look a bit larger. Mm. I don't know what's the, 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 um, the reason behind that, but you do. Yeah. And because you do so much beauty. Correct. Right. So everything is like really close up and it really does help when you have a, really small and slim jawline. It's the K-pop face. That's what they call it. Yes. And I think, I always tell my friends that I love this job because it has forced me to do so much work on myself to finally be able to say, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with how I look. If I need to, um, like, like, 
find a way to work better with my face, maybe I just use my left profile because it's, it's a lot like less prominent than my right jaw. But that's okay. You know, you just find a way to work around it. And I think without this job, I probably wouldn't have reached this level of, I would say self-awareness and acceptance. Yeah. Um, in my 20s, I was all over the place. I mean, like, I just, I just would wanted you, to be liked, you know? Would and you I, see it affected your self-esteem, your self-worth? Yes, but not entirely because of how I looked. It was really because I wasn't sure of myself. I just wanted to show up well. And I wanted people to be convinced, not be convinced, but more of like, I just wanted people to accept me and to feel like, hey, she's, she's nice, you know? Because of your face shape? I mean, not because of my face shape, but everything together, like in the whole package, right? Okay. How you dress, how you look, how you carry yourself, how you do your makeup, mm -hmm. you know, how you speak. It's everything, like basically your image, mm. you know? and That's crazy, isn't it? And the image that I wanted to go for, or rather I, I felt that I was, it's just, hey, I, I'm nice. Why don't you give me a chance, you know, to get to know me better? I can get to know you better. And, but obviously, you know, then along the way, I had to learn it the hard way that, hey, actually, that's not all, like, there mm -hmm. is to, you know, like, making new friends, doing better in the industry, and things like that. It really has to start from within, to be so sure of yourself that, it's okay if people don't like you. It's okay if sometimes you show up, you know, um, a little more like higher than usual. It's okay mm -hmm. if you don't show up like at your 100%. Well, for me, growing up, I had really bad skin. Like mm. a lot of breakouts. So that, that definitely um, affected my self-esteem. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know how to take care of my skin. Um, I wasn't given the best advice to take care of my skin. And on top of that, like, kids in school are not nice. Like, you know, they would laugh at you in your face. And I still remember those people who did that. Um, I don't know whether that still happens in school, but it definitely affects your self-esteem, you know? Yeah. I did not enjoy that. Um, what do you do along the way that helped? To be honest, there was nothing I could do. I mean... Breakouts are breakouts. Teenage breakouts are teenage breakouts. Uh, I could not confront these people that made fun of me because, I mean, my self-esteem was already so low. How do you mm. do that, you mm. know? So I wouldn't say I retreated in a shell or anything like that, but I just hang out with my friends that make me feel good about myself. Mm. And um, yeah, I, it, it, yeah, it is what it is. La. Okay, so that happened to me when I was younger. Now, as an adult, well, I've learned to take care of my skin. So, yippee And then there are facials. <laughs> there are like all these amazing skincare products that I finally know how to use appropriately, you know, during the right time and time of the day and during the different seasons, which is great. Thank God. Um, but I don't think... I think it will come in another form. Well, at least for me. Uh, the, the next big mountain or hurdle I had to like jump over was... When you became a mom? No, when I got pregnant. Oh. Yeah, when I got pregnant, oh my god. I did not think that my body would change that much. And it was just insane. What changes do you, like, that stuck out to you? I put on 30 kgs when I got pregnant. That is a lot. Like, that is like more than half my weight, right? Yeah, more than half my original weight. And... I guess it was also because when I was preg uh, when I was not pregnant, you know, I was very conscious over how I look. I still am very conscious of how, over how I look, and I really, really take care of it. You know, go to the gym and I eat well and mm. all of that. But when I was pregnant, I was like, "Aha! Let's like let everything let loose and like just consume whatever I want." And I consumed like I inhaled my food. Right? I would eat my food and then I would eat John's food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then at night, I will go and buy cake. So I will call the cake shop and say, Hi, I'm coming. Yeah, at 10 p.m. I'll call the cake shop. Hey, I'm coming. And then they'll prepare my cake and then I'll just drive by and then I'll tap my card and I'll just pick up my cake. So convenient, right? So I put on 30 kg and 
I guess that's why I, di- I didn't feel beautiful when I was pregnant. I know a lot of people enjoy their pregnancy. I hated my pregnancy. I absolutely hated it because I did not recognize myself. My body did not feel like it belonged to me. Mm. You know? And on top of that, she was still exercising. Like, you were very diligent with your Pilates yeah, and yeah. all. But okay, so the Pilates part, one part of it was to be fit, you know, was to mm. keep fit. But the other part was also the internal stuff. Yep. You know, after you give birth, a lot of things changes inside. And uh, Pilates is very good for your pelvic floor. So there mm-hmm. was actually a, a, a very... Um, conscious decision behind it. Yes, conscious decision and very functional uh, reason why I went. Um, but yeah, I mean, no Pilates could have saved me, you know, with the amount that I was eating. It was really, really insane. And then after I gave birth... Yeah, it was just my boobs grew Mm. five times. Like, I can show you pictures, everybody. (laughs) No, I can show you pictures (laughs) because you need to see this. You You need to see this. You will not recognize me. Like, and it's not sexy. It's not sexual. It's purely functional. It's to feed my baby, right? But it was so vulgar and so there and like I had to constantly buy different bras oh my god when I was pregnant my underwear went up like I don't know how many sizes I bought L I bought XL it's not big enough I I don't know how I got there I really really don't know how how after giving birth I did not like how I looked at all you know when I went to her wedding I was uh, I mean I was obviously I was present very very happy for her but like I wouldn't really take photos, right? I would like hide behind. Still trying to deal with everything. And at the time, I was breastfeeding. And then there's like stretch marks and all these things that you have to come to terms with. But um... And you need to know, Amanda's... Amanda, before she got pregnant, used to be that kind that doesn't really shy away from the camera in her bikini. You know, she would... She would just be like, Hey, I love Bali. I love being out here. I love being by the beach. Yeah. And it's one of her favorite places to be at. Yeah. So for her to shy away, it's very, very like different. And yeah. you could really tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was really enjoying myself but also at the same time. I wasn't as like, wow, as, as I usually am, you know, as um, expressive, I guess, as I usually am. And yeah, I mean, I guess that is part of my journey. Even though I say I didn't necessarily enjoy it, um, everything was functional you know there was a reason why my boobs grew like that and my body grew like that also maybe because I'm a very small person in stature so my body had to grow in that way to compensate and carry my baby you know Mm. and my baby came out healthy my baby came out you know at a good weight and everything so I mean eating two steaks at night two pieces of steaks at night I mean it paid off my baby is strong and healthy you know he's a tall boy and yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I don't know. I mean, I think when people do ask me about it, mm. I do tell yeah. people, you yeah. know, I do share, but I don't necessarily put it on my social media platform. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, I mean, since we we're talking, I think I'm a, I'm better at like conversations. One to one like that. Yeah. 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 So like, I would say beyond physical appearance, what else do you do to feel well? I know you did a lot of like, you did a lot of work. Yeah. During those nine months. Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of like spiritual work mm. uh, on myself. Um, oh, one more thing. Mm. Mm. My teenage nightmares came back to haunt me when oh. I was pregnant. Like, so I was breaking out like mad. Yeah. But it's a lot of it's hormonal, right? Mm-hmm. So like breaking out here and like, and here on my eyebrow, uh, below my eyebrow, okay, I'm pointing like to below my eyebrow. Oh, you can On top of my eyelid. Oh. Yeah. Like here. And the worst part is, it, it was those bumpy ones without a head. Oh, it's like those cystic kind that yeah. you cannot even squeeze out. Cannot. And it's just there and painful. But and it won't be anything? one. It will be three. One, two, three. One, two. Fun. <laughs> it was Horrible. <laughs> And everyone was convinced like, okay, you're having a girl, you're having a girl because they're going to take away your beauty. No, I was having a boy. So what was up with that? <laughs> Let me be beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay, so well, that was like a hurdle, you know, that I had to come, I had to cross recently. Was there anything that 
came across your path lately? I think. Hmm. I, I would say that my relationship with food. So I'm somebody um, that grew up eating whatever I wanted. Then obviously when I don't watch my diet, my diet became just fried chicken all the time because I love fried chicken. Um, I'll have Korean barbecue. And after a while, I realized that I was just choosing food based on what I liked, not what was healthy for Good me. for you. Correct. And I think I spent most of my 20s just like that. Um, I mean, granted, I, I tried to keep myself healthy. I go for health checks. I will probably like, you know, um, what's that thing? I will take supplements. But I think with food, I didn't really keep myself in check until earlier this year. So I did health check and I got this scare saying that I have borderline high cholesterol. And then they told me that I need to eat more fish, more omega-3 and cut down my, from my fried food. So that was when I really like dialed back and like reflected on like what my food choices were. So I love food. My relationship with food is still really good. But it's more of like being very intentional with what I want to eat. So now I literally have to go on Google and I need to find out what a balanced diet is. Though you learn all this in school, right? They say you have to eat more greens and things like that. I mean, I do eat a lot of greens. The banchan at, at Korean barbecue is, is greens, right? But it's still like not enough. <laughs> yeah, the banchan, you know, with the Korean barbecue banchan. Yeah. And ah, uh, if you wrap the pork belly with the lettuce leaf, that's vegetables, man. I'm healthy. Okay. But obviously, my uh, my report card didn't say that I was very healthy. Lah. So I am currently dealing with this. I need to find out what diet works best for me because my diet has always been anything goes, everything that's convenient. I love my Thai fan, you know. But that's not the healthiest. I, need, I eat a lot of carbs. I love carbs white rice instead of brown rice kind of girl. So yeah, that's something that I'm dealing with. I'm trying to work around. But if you guys have any tips on what makes the best like, you know, meals, or if I can, if you have your meal prep tips, that'll be good or so. Yeah, but that's- I think you're quite a healthy eater. I mean, I've seen her eat before. She's not like excessively unhealthy. Mm. But, but apparently my cut just is okay, not healthy enough. But I have, a, I have a deeper question for you, right? Uh, How about- how okay, so this is your relationship with food, but how about your relationship with your appearance? Has anything come up lately? Mm, I always had this issue with my lower belly, you know, and I think a lot of girls like deal with this also because you know they always tell you suck in your belly. Stand you know up that's straight. not good for you. Really? Yes. Oh. Apparently, it weakens your muscles. Dude, really? Apparently. Did not know that. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Really? yeah. Oh, I've been doing this all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh. But anyway, continue. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's like the, the problem area that I have. Like, it's always not flat. You know those that you see online, on social He's media, like food, with the line that they have. It's the, like a food baby. Yes. Okay. I think it's normal. also because I, I like to drink wine, things like that. So it adds mm. to the lower belly she, fat. She likes to drink wine. Yes. Yes, I love um yeah, I love my my alcohol, you know. I do appreciate and as I grew older I appreciated it a lot more because you can learn about so many different things. It's like a whole new world, the history behind it, how every bottle is made, what are the different concoctions. Yeah, let's let's just not go there. But the issue is that with my food choices um, and everything together, it leads to lower belly fat. And it's stubborn fat that cannot remove, like it cannot go away. And I know that they always say, you know, ladies, it's normal to have a little pouch there. But it's so hard to not compare yourself to the social media standard of how flat your tummy should be, mm. you know. And they just look so perfect. Stand up straight with the cinched in waist and the flat, I mean, mm -mm. I mean, no washboard apps, but you have that line, you know? Mm. So, it's a but, little hard not to compare yourself to that. And then, you look at yourself in the mirror, and then you look down, you're like, mm, okay. But that was kind of what we were talking about earlier, right? Like, yeah. these are like unrealistic beauty standards. Mm. But it really does get to you, though. Though, 
I feel yeah. like a lot of people, because it's been said enough, you know, and there's a lot of like body positivity, like movements around, people know that it's unrealistic but people still feel so uncomfortable. Yeah, because you have like the Kardashians parading themselves, you know. I mean, I'm not a fan of the Kardashians. I'm not. Like, I don't like what they do to... I don't like how they make women feel about themselves. Um, you know, it's... They do so many procedures. They get so many procedures done but they never admit to it. And they just say, oh, I just got filler. No, girl, you got a whole ass face transplant. Like, you know. And I mean, more power to you if you want to do it. Honestly, everybody does it. Everybody does something. Let's just put it there. But if you're not going to admit to it, that's kind of shady. And so many women look up to you. I mean, say what you want to say. Oh, you know, I don't understand why I'm a role model. Well, too bad you are one, Right. And you put yourself up on the public platform. You ex you so many like, young girls are exposed to you, and and you know they look up to you for your beauty looks and like your fashion looks. And to say that you didn't do anything or like to kind of minimize the procedures that you have done, I think that's really really dangerous, and that sets a very unhealthy beauty standard. I agree. Yeah. I'd also think that because of that, people would just jump on Google and be like, okay, um, Kylie Jenner's face. Or like I've they, done that. Yeah. I, I do that. I still do mm. that. I like I Pinterest um Kim Kardashian makeup, Kim Kardashian hair for looks. But do you know that my makeup artist, my hairstylist tells me you will never look like that? Because they're using wigs. They're using wigs. They're using um uh, what's that thing called? Weaves. Their hair is not real. Nothing about it is real. People use face tape to like pull their their face back, you know? And like, yeah, you know face tape? That's how they get that lifted fox like look. Like this, like this. Yeah. I mean, it's either Botox or face tape. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you like, there's a lot of things that we know or like people tell us and it kind of puts things into perspective. So I, I just thought that would be nice to share it with you guys. Like, really don't feel bad about it. I think it's good that if we talk about it, more people are mindful. It doesn't mean that you'll feel better because I, it doesn't make me feel better. But at least, you know, at the back of your mind. Yeah. You know, and you try to uh, manage, your, manage expectations. your expectations a yeah. bit. Yeah, You'll be yeah. like, mm, yeah, okay. I'll just yeah. find like better clothes to, to match like my body shape. Yeah. You know, and the, yeah. oh, I just want to talk about this. In your 20s, you could wear absolutely anything. But as you got, as I got older, I'm like, hey, why does this dress not fit like before? Like, I recently wore this black dress that I bought and I love so much. I, I just wore it. I'm like, wait, it doesn't fit right where is it anymore. From? Um, it's from Valerie's shop. So, mm -hmm, store mm -hmm. under. Mm -hmm. I love her dresses and I always like to support. Yeah. But I just wore it. In, then the area around my arm, my armpit area, just had this like weird folds. Now, now I look at the mirror, I'm like, maybe it's water retention or something. Maybe, maybe. So that right. we have that as well, you know. Sometimes yeah. you wake up in the morning and you'll be like, hey, I look a lot more bloated. Mm -mm. And it does like dampen your self esteem. Yeah. And a lot of things like your clothes stop fitting the same, you have water retention, maybe you ate too much salt the day before. Mm. So many. Are you a water retention girl? Oh, I love. Yeah, me too. Oh, oh my god, are we oh, water retention yes, girls? Yeah, water retention girls. Mine is the girls. face. Mine's the face. Mine's the eyes. Actually, mine is everywhere. I'm just buffy. Mm. Mine is like eyes. And then I, I get very hooded eyes. Yes. Then like just I look like I cried sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's just not is this a pow? Yes. But there's a lot of ways that you can find out like what you can do to mitigate that. For example, uh like face massages. Um, in the morning, you know, you try to find ways to dip puff, like like take a warm shower, you know. What I do, do what what else do you do to dip puff your face? I drink coffee. But that works only like after the 90 minute mark. I don't know, actually I don't do anything. <laughs> I just go around telling people <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I have water retention <laughs> on my face. <laughs> and oh no but my makeup artist is really amazing she knows how to massage it out oh. so if I have shoots I'm lucky if not I just walk around with the water retention face and hopes it subsides throughout the day 
<laughs> Sometimes I have to jump on shoots like uh, at 9 a.m. Yeah. So when I wake up, right, then I become very puffy. Yeah. Then I'll just massage. Then it still doesn't get better. Then I'll be like, wait, hang on. So I'll actually go and exercise. Mm, yeah, it exercising helps. helps too. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> sauna. But a very, love sauna. at home, no sauna. I love sauna. At home, uh, no sauna. How to? How to? <laughs> okay, so in Malaysia, there's this thing called sweat spa. And you can just pay a, a pay for a package and you can just keep on going. <gasps> Yeah, it's an infrared sauna. It's uh-huh. really, really good. Um, you sweat differently. It's not like exercising kind of sweat. There are these metals that it helps you expel. Yeah. They use that infrared to, mm. to make you sweat. It's really, really good. So I have one next to my house. Oh, after I gave birth, I went to the sauna a lot because I couldn't, um, I couldn't exercise for like three months. After you give birth, you cannot exercise. At least three months. At mm. least. Because you've got to let your body heal and come together, right? So... The next best thing was I bangkong a lot. I urut a lot, massage. And I went to the spa. I went to the sweat spa. I mean, that was one of the few things that I did to make myself feel better. And like, oh, look, the water retention is gone. But it was not. It was the same. (laughs) So before every episode, we kind of reach out to our followers to get them to share their stories, you know. And right now, I'm going to read out one of them that was shared with us just this week. Uh, Dear Amanda and Christabel, I, 23 female, fell head over heels over a boy, 21 male, for three years, but it was a situationship while he was still in a relationship of five years. I only found out two years in that they were still dating, but he lied, telling me that they'd already broken up when I first met him. and And when I asked again, he said that they were back together. Basically, while our situationship was ongoing, he cheated on his actual girlfriend. We weren't even dating secretly and he even introduced me to some of his friends while he was still in a relationship. It took me some time to get over him because of how infatuated I was and I had, and I put him on a high pedestal. It's difficult to get over it even though I was disgusted. I still like him a lot. Mm. Till now? I guess. But so relatable though, right? I think we've all been there. No. <laughs> okay. No, no. Not not necessarily. Girl. Not necessarily dating a guy who has a girlfriend, but like still being in oh, love oh, with yes, someone who is yes. not good for you. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, And I think it especially sucks because this guy is attached. I got a question. Yeah. What did his friends say to you and say to him? Because they obviously met the girlfriend, right? So as a friend, like, what, what are you saying to this guy? Mm. And do you know not you know? all friends call each other out on their shit? I mean, but you need to at least have a conversation because you need to prep your friends beforehand. Like, hey, you know, this girl is coming. Uh, she's not my girlfriend. But someone else. But not everyone does that. So she can just I, show I up know with friends the friend group and be like... bring in, like, different people that they are dating. Like, that law. Just like, like uh, that. And then after a while, you just don't question it because it's just so normal. Like, So it's like they're coming to your house and da-da, like, this is just girl A, girl Sometimes B. there's not like, it's really bad to say, but sometimes you don't even remember the girl or the guy anymore. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But I, it feels like it's going to be a lot of trauma and I hope you feel better. I mean, I think, first of all, like, this guy, he lied to you, like, big time, you know? This is not something that, can you get over it? Is this something that you are willing to accept, uh, accept if you are, if you choose to go ahead with this situationship or relationship? I think these are questions that you need to ask yourself. Um, I would say, like, what does, what do your friends say? You know, because you definitely will talk to them about it. And also... I'm sure you have contemplated leaving this. But what is making it so hard to leave? Is it, be- is it because... She said she is infatuated emotional- with him and he, she puts him on a high pedestal. I mean, this guy is older than her, you know, significantly, like six years. And that's a lot when you are in your early 20s as a, as a, as a woman and then your other partner is in their late 20s. You know, the dynamics... It, there's definitely someone who is more dominant. And I'm not going to assume just because he's older, um, he is more dominant. But he does come with more experience, you know. 
So, I don't know, girl. I'm just going to say get out. Straight up. Yeah, everybody's nodding behind yeah, I, the camera. I don't... I try not to like tell people what to do. But like this one is like straight up get out. Like the red flags are all there. You don't want to be with someone like this. Like he lied to you right off the bat. If he can do that to his girlfriend, he can do that to you. Um, you deserve so much better. You're in your early 20s. You can... There, there are so many people to meet. So many things to experience. Why uh, tie yourself down to somebody like this? And it's nice when you have someone to just call your own. You know? And I don't know what you... How exactly you might be feeling... But it's nice to just feel safe in a relationship. And I would say that you definitely deserve that. Everybody deserves that. It, it's a sucky situation to be in, but... Many years down the road, you, you will, will look learn back so much from this. And then you'll be like, yes, I got yeah, over it. Yeah. And then, you know, from this, you will learn uh, how to read red flags better. You know, and like what you want, what you don't want. Hang in there, girl. All right. So I guess that brings us to the end of episode four. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for watching mm -hmm. and Wait, listening before, in. Before we end, uh, uh, uh. what was your messy confession this week? What what something messy that happened to you this week? Oh, me? Something messy that happened this week? Yeah. Oh, currently, I would say like, my tummy issues but um oh you can share oh uh <laughs> i don't really have a very good tummy and mm. like i talked about it in the episode about choosing my foods right so if you guys have any tips well you didn't say wait your tummy issue as in like you got irritable bowel yes. syndrome oh i didn't know that okay, maybe not ibs but more of like i must i really say it here I think Belle needs to take care of her stomach better and yes, eat better, and, and right? Eat better. Yeah. yeah, I think my food choices have yeah. to be better. So if you guys have any tips on like meal prep mm. and all, that would be good for mm. me. Um, yeah. What's my messy confession this week? I, well, Belle was late this morning, so that was kind of messy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I took so long at immigration. So this time I decided to take the airplane for the first time alone. Um, in a long while, and I booked it to KLIA, which is actually an hour plus away from the studio. Plus, I was stuck at immigration, so I was late for our shoot. And it was just like a mess. And then there was a jam as well. Apparently, Wednesdays, there are jams. So yes, I that was the mess today, and I was late. Um, yes, my mess today was created by Belle. Yes. So Anyway! Time, <laughs> I will take Firefly, or I'll take the car. And with that... You know, with Belle messing up my whole day. Thank you so much. But it's okay. She's coming home with me. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. You know, we hope you feel a little more included in what we had to share today. If you're interested, you can follow us on our socials. It's MommyPod, M-A-W-M-I-P-O-D. Or if you're watching on the Takeaway Table on YouTube, leave us a comment uh, because we're going to keep this running and we just want to, you know, get your feedback. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, and yeah. Looking forward to going back to Amanda's house after this and to sleep. Sleep. Bye. Bye.